Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have an instructive game to share with you from the 2022 FTX Crypto Cup. On the white end, R. Pragnananda playing against Ali Reza Faruja. Two players that we'll soon see more of in this upcoming candidates tournament. In this game ahead, we're going to see excellent piece coordination by Pragnananda. And this comes out of a minor piece imbalance position. Let's have a look. Opening wise, Ray Lopez, Berlin defense. In this variation, we have an exchange of E pawns, as well as a pair of knights. In this early phase, Prague goes hunting for a bishop. Frugia drives the rook back, and now the knight. The knight from its current post obstructs the rook, and you might as well say the bishop. So why play in this way? Well, White knows he will have the time to pounce on this sensitive f5 square. Black is, after all, too tempy away from conveniently controlling it. So he will be able to get there, further bothering this dark square bishop who's getting a workout. And now move 14 is one that grabbed my attention when I initially skimmed through this game. On board, D, 3. One step, not two. There's nothing wrong with going two steps. There's different ideas, do know, uh, connected with uh, each pawn position. A thought or two I have here is, you know, why not just go two? You could go two safely, why not go two? Whether you're playing to d3 or d4, there's tension between the dark square bishops. The likelihood of a dark square bishop exchange is very high. Wouldn't it make more sense, therefore, to have a pawn in the center on a dark square, coordinating with your remaining bishop, a light square bishop? That is certainly a train of thought. What we're going to find a few moves down the road here, is that Prague has available to him a new idea because the pawn is on d3 rather than d4. At least that's what I think. Let's get a few more moves in. d5. There go the dark square bishops. White has not been successful tracking the dark square bishop with his knight. However, in this current position, white is coordinated on e7. He gets to hop in, say check, and track the light square bishop. So this is the minor piece imbalance position we have. The follow-up, move 18, c4. This is a move that you may want to steer clear of as white if your d-pawn is on d4. Why do I say this? Well... In this current position, if black takes on c4, you get to recapture with the pawn. And note, there are no isolated pawns here. There are no center pawns here. There are also no central outpost squares for black's knight. If instead, we could envision this guy here already on d4, if you play c4 in this position with the pawn on d4, black can take. You would have to recapture with the bishop. And what would we have? We would have an isolated d4 pawn. And with that isolated d4 pawn comes an excellent outpost square for a knight. Okay. Some things to digest here. On one hand, Prague is without a doubt. He's aware of these position types, bishop versus knight, if I have a light square bishop, my pawns in general should be positioned on dark. What more does Prague know? He knows that, in general, if my opponent has pawns on light squares, I should try and break those pawns down to try and extend the scope for my light square bishop. That's one of the things that's happening here. White is trying to break down a black pawn on a light square. What more is happening here? A diagonal is open for the queen. She's now a blink away from targeting a couple weak pawns. 
Okay, from here, knight f6. B pawn in the crosshairs. Queen f4, ignoring the threat. Black has a stronger threat. The B pawn is frequently a poison pawn, and would it ever be poison in this position? If queen takes B here, white will in just a few moves get mated. Look at the pressure here after knight g4. There is no defense against mate. You play g3, so what? Check, checkmate. Okay. How does Prague reply? He says, get out of my house. And I have a flight square now. Queen goes back, defending the B pawn directly. And now, cool move here. Queen takes a step to the left. Pinpoints a weak A pawn. And looks to coordinate on the seventh rank with the rook. Now, the computer recommendation here is to simply drop back to b8, babysitting the a pawn. Ferugia plays much more actively, pushes a pawn to c5. This cuts the coordination off on the e7 square and sets a trap. He says, You take my a pawn now, you're going to get hit with rook a8. Your queen is a goner. Okay. Play follows with c takes d. Knight takes d. And rook c1. So we have pressure on c5. There's a pin on the c file. And this last move is now renewing this threat to take on a7. The queen would no longer be trapped. For instance, let me just make a passing move. Let's say black flicked in a flight square. White would be able to take on a7. Rook a8 in this position, there's queen takes c5. So, pressure here, more pressure here. Pin on the c file. Black responds with queen b6. Out of the pin, direct defense of the a pawn. But white is already on this only opened file. It's not a fully developed rook, though, until it has a function along a rank. Here it is. It can't get to the seventh rank here with the knight covering, but there's a problem, a continual problem here. He is coordinating very well on the c5 pawn. Two hitting it directly, a third indirectly. Pieces are in the cross Here's right here for black, the knight and the pawn. Knight b4, and now an excellent move, d4. You really can't hit c5 anymore in this position. Rook, queen, two rooks, and a pawn. White's going to win a pawn in this position. How do you save it? There's a pin along the fifth rank here, I should note. If the pawn advances or captures, there would be rook b5, and this knight will fall. So this pawn is now officially toast. This quick pressure, this coordination in the center with the rooks, the queen, and the pawn, you know, he has officially overtaken this pawn. He's going to win it. Takes with the rook. This guy is now a passer. From here, rook on c to d8. D pawn gets running. It is an extra and certainly the biggest pawn in the position. Knight e5, queen, mission accomplished on a3. Challenges the knight. It is hanging. It's defended. Some security now. White has consolidated. Everything is defended. He's taking away a square, possible knight jump. On g4, white has f3 covered with the queen. Queen d6. And from here, bishop g2. We have a bit of a changing of the guard. Bishop, super convenient defender of this passed pawn. This is freeing up the rook to go elsewhere. The prized rank, 7th rank on board. Rook on b8. Sad to play in this way, but I mean, what else can you do playing as black here? This is already a 
Uh, this has been a winning position since winning the pawn. So you have to go into this turtle mode, just defending from here. Queen a3, she's returning. This is an this is the best piece, the black queen. She's blockading the pass pawn. We want to get pushing this passer. And white is willing to trade queens just to allow this pawn to get rolling. So black's not so quick to trade queens. Defends the a pawn and it gets running. Here we go with d6, queen d4, queen c5, offering exchange again, x ring an unprotected h-pawn, queen takes b, f4, knight has to move, knight g6, queen takes h with check, king g8, and now we have the bishop and rook coordinating on f7. And when you see this last move, bishop d5, you could say to yourself, oh, the bishop is attacking the pawn, but I like to think of it as the bishop is pinning the pawn. It does imply that the pawn is attacked, but it goes that one step further. It may draw your attention to the fact that this knight is now hanging, or so it seems. There is this threat in the air of queen takes knight now that there is a pin. In the game, it is rook f8, defending f7. And here we do not have queen takes knight. Instead, king h1. Why not queen takes knight in this position? Well, because there'd be queen d4 check, and then queen takes bishop. And now the queen is under fire, and she's not able to move and still defend this pawn. So we really don't want to have a position like this where the knight and bishop have been exchanged and the big pawn has been lost. So no thanks. This is a very sad minor piece. This guy here is the MVP of the current position. Is there really a better spot for the bishop? Perfect on d5. From here, finishing up, king h1, queen f6, pawn advances again, bishop e4. There's coordination now on the h7 square indirectly. Uh, indirect coordination on h7. The knight is pinned. Any move? And we're getting in there for mate. Rook on b to d8. Queen f5. We still have this pin on the knight. And white is gearing up for h4, h5. And there's nothing that black can do about this idea. Tries queen a3. There's pressure on g3. So what? We simply defend. We can lose this pawn with check. Simply block. Black in this position has two connected passers, but they're so far away to pose any threat. Pawn quality right here. Look at the depth of this white pawn. This final idea of simply pushing the H pawn forces resignation here by Ferruja. There's nothing to do. The plan here, h5, and you're going to be winning more material very soon. Completely gone here in this final position. What did you think of this one? Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.